Okay, today I'm going to do a presentation on saving old data that's in the form of floppies you may have sitting around and in the current day and age <coughs> your computer doesn't have a floppy disk drive and so you're got floppies, got data on them maybe you might want to save them and you just you can't. I'm also going to go into some of the tools that are available uh, to restore data not only on floppy disks but even on hard disks there's some kind of uh, corruption going on of course this is all you know using Linux and in this case um, since my floppy controller um, is actually on an older machine here Pentium 4 um, I put in a, I installed a version of SUSE Linux that is about age appropriate or maybe a little newer actually than the machine I'm going to be working on. Now the reason why I can't um, get um, the floppy disk controller into the new machines because they use different types of cables in these new machines, at least the one that I have. I also just happen to have around here that I can't seem to get to work, get to work uh, an older USB control floppy disk drive. If I can find it. Yeah, I was just going to demonstrate the fact that it didn't work. Here it is. It was issued by IBM. Now, I don't know if it actually has a hardware problem. Uh, I'd have to boot up my laptop and go into Windows to see if that was the case, or if it, you know, it's indeed broken, or if it just, the drivers just aren't there by default in Linux or don't exist. I don't know. Nonetheless, um, this seems like it could be a possible option. You know, got a, this was for a flop. This is for a laptop. It's you know an IBM floppy disk controller. It's got a USB cable, and theoretically, so long as I don't unplug my camera here, uh, I think I'll unplug storage device. Plug this thing in and just just show you how what's going on. So I got it plugged in, got them there, and let's just try one of these. I mean, I'm diverging, but I'm trying to get in as many subjects as, subjects as I can into this whole thing. Oh, there we go. We had a green light. At one point, <laughs> there's some, it looks like there's some functionality to it. I'm just going to go in here to a bunch of this is what most users would do. They go to computer and they'd look and they'd see the droids accessible actually. And they'd see that the iOmega hard disk I have up there is accessible, but they wouldn't. <coughs> oh, wait, floppy drive. Let's see what happens. I'm double click on this and I'm just not getting any response. Now, the thing I don't like about GNOME when it's compared to KDE uh, is in K in KDE, you can right click on something, select properties, and you can actually see what device it's trying to get to. <coughs> right now, uh, as far as I know, um, it's just saying it's trying to go to a computer. It doesn't mean anything to me, but if I looked on this, I bet you the network mounted Drobo drive I have, it shows the location as being computer. And so there really isn't much here to do. Now, uh, from experience, <coughs> you know, from a while back, I would have uh, gone in and <coughs> tried to modify the etc. FS tab uh, directory. The odd thing about uh, floppy drive controllers, because the USB storage devices tend to want to use an SDB or an HDB kind of um, device extension. And uh, I don't, <laughs> you know, usually floppy drives are actually FD0, DevFD0. It's mostly every time I've used it. It may have changed in kernel land recently, but <coughs> not that I'm aware about. Now, there's another part of this, um, something called removable media. <coughs> and again, I don't see any information here. I don't particularly want to monkey around with it right now. So what I'm going to end up doing is 
going to my CISA 10 machine and get on with this presentation. Okay, so I have a number of old floppy disks, and this is by far way depleted from what it used to be. Of course, I have a floppy drive over here. Monitor, this is the old SUSE Linux, and also I'll back up what I said and go to properties here. This is why KDE is better. It's telling you the device is DevFD0, and it's trying to mount to the mount point media floppy. That, that's all great. At least I know something about what it's trying to do. GNOME, I have no idea. That's another reason why I don't like GNOME. So there. Okay, anyway, so I've got a floppy in the device, and I actually even have an icon on my desktop, which KD4 won't allow. And I like it there, because I don't have to click on my computer or keep it open. I'm going to have a number of windows open here anyway. Now, in my home directory, I'll just start out and explain a few things. I have a few uh, directories that I've created. Okay, one directory is called mount. And in that, I have a directory called image. And you look at it, and there's nothing there. Whoa. What's that for? Well, we'll get into that. And the next thing I have is just a directory with floppies in it. And depends on who the vendor is. This doesn't really matter. Basically, uh, what my procedure is, is first I stick the floppy in, click on the icon. If I could copy and paste all the files without any kind of um, error showing up, I assume everything copied correctly. I unmount the floppy and <coughs> destroy it, and I move on to the next floppy. If I cannot, then I have to try to do some kind of <coughs> data rescue procedure. And that's what the program called DD Rescue that was that I first learned about in this book called Nopix Hacks. Right over here. Described on page, I, I don't know when what version this is. There may be a newer one out, there may not. A lot of the stuff in here is outdated somewhat, but I think this one was published in 2005. Page 188. You don't need Nopix to do these things, by the way. They're all Linux type of <coughs> procedures. It goes into, you know, procedure that I'm going to end up doing. Okay, so you need the terminal for this. What? Well, DD Rescue is a pretty... Uh, <coughs> um, it's not a graphical user interface based program, and in, in this case you'll see that it's really not necessary if you have a basic, basic functioning shell. Okay. Now, there are two versions of DD Rescue. There used to be, when this Nopix Hacks book came out in 2005, two different programs. One was called DD Rescue and one was called DD Help. <coughs> so there was an extra set of procedures to follow <coughs> to restore the data on your drive. Since that time, the GNU project has um, continued to develop DD Rescue. They combined DD Help and DD Rescue into one package, and it's just called DD Rescue. It is available with the SUSE Linux distribution that I have installed here. And I believe it's probably, I've probably got SUSE Linux 10 in here. Yes, SUSE Linux 10.0. Why don't I have 14 in there? Well, 14 is made for newer hardware. It's more likely to run on newer hardware than it is to run on older hardware. And sometimes if you get a Linux for, if, uh, you're probably more likely to get your machine running the way you want it in general if you have a distribution that is maybe a year or two newer than the machine you're working on. If you have spe you know hardware that has you know problems like Intel video drivers or anyway, <coughs> I'm not going to get into that right now. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the AS Control Center. I'm just going to look and see what version I actually have installed here. So what I did is went to YAST, and I went to Software Management. <coughs> and it's going to take its time. Well, it's taking its time. I'll explain right now. I'm recording this in Ubuntu 11 
04 because uh, I can't get a satisfactory uh, recording out of SUSE Linux 11. My last one was absolutely horrible. The only thing that really came through was sound. Um, I, got <coughs> I have to look at my settings again. I think I might be using AVI, which is <coughs> for all. <coughs> Excuse me, for all practical purposes, the quality is broken. Okay, so I'm going to search for DD Rescue. I think it was spelled like that, if I remember right. Okay, fine. Guess not. There it is, DD Rescue, one word. And this version is 1.11. <coughs> Okay, just so you know, it was compiled in 2005, which is odd, which is around the time this book was published, but this book didn't seem to know about the GNU project having adopted the program. Okay, so let's move on. So I have a disk <coughs> in the drive, and okay, let's just, or, do I have one? Yeah, this old... ThinkPad 600X truck pulling driver. Why am I saving it? I don't know. I still have the hardware sitting around. Who knows? I might have to reinstall, so I want to make sure that I can get to this driver. To this driver. So, Fuller, let's see, truck pulling driver. Did I already do this? No. Okay, so I'm all set up. I have a place to put this stuff. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to mount this. Now, how. Copy this, put it over here, paste, yes, copy paste does work in Linux. You can right click and all that stuff. <coughs> I could keep doing this until I come across a floppy that presents an error. That's pretty much it. So I could, and then what I gotta do in the older versions of Linux, Unless you had auto mount enabled, there's a feature in the kernel you can do that. You have to right click unmount. Take her out and destroy her. Actually recycle those um, all the middle on there because I'm recycle nut. Well, not a nut, but <coughs> maybe you think so. I don't know. Okay, so the next one will be the PMCIA dock drivers. Now, if this one is able to mount and copy the files without a problem, I'm just going to do the DD Rescue thing anyway, so you can see a few other things that you're going to want to know if you get in that situation. Copy, paste. Sometimes it's able to read the file initially, but sometimes it just doesn't get through the whole thing. Now, <clears throat> if everything goes well, for every floppy disk you have in your little bucket, you can be done pretty soon. I guess this gives you a decent idea of what to do. You could also format the disk, but why keep all these floppies around when you don't have a drive to work with? <coughs> I'll also show you how to um, um, use a floppy disk image to, um, if you need to. And I'm also going to go into DOSEMU and I'm going to show you how these things actually work. Other programs can actually work. <coughs> okay, so I'm done with that. That's unmounted. Got that set aside. Now I'm just gonna for this one. I'm just gonna right now. I'm just gonna use the DD Rescue tools. Why? Because I feel like it. Or that's what I'm here for. <coughs> okay, so I'm a regular user, but I I've already uh, 
the first command I typed in after I logged in was su, press enter, entered my password. Now I'm root in the shell. <coughs> now, using the up arrow, you can actually <laughs> you can actually go back to commands you've issued before. And the last image I made was for the IBM infrared drivers, but this one I'm going to make for the video drivers. So I'm going to change the name of the image. Now what's happening here is I'm saying <coughs> DD Rescue. I want you to take make an image of my floppy disk and plonk it into the rescued folder that is in my home directory and call it IBM video image. Press enter, and then it gives all this stuff, test input, output. <coughs> you can also use the same kind of command for um, a hard drive. So if you have a smaller hard drive that's getting older, you can't use it, but you're somehow able to connect it as a second hard drive on your system. You can do DD Rescue, Dev HD0, or in modern parlance, you know, Dev HD0 or SD0, and then you can pick where you want to save the image. Of course, <coughs> you can't, if you don't have, it, it saves, it's going to save an image that's exactly 1.44 megabytes big, exactly the size of the floppy. Of course, I have plenty of space to store floppy disks on my hard drive. <coughs> you obviously cannot take a smaller hard drive and uh, a hard drive that's just as big as your own hard drive or that you don't have enough space for and make an image, it's not going to fit. You don't have enough space. You have to have enough space as the hard disk itself to make that image. <coughs> okay, so that's done. Now, what good is this image file? So what, I have an image. Can I do anything with it? Can I get the files off it? Yes, you can. There's something called the loopback function in Linux, and I'm going to use that too, and I'm going to use the up arrow to get to it. And basically the command is mount minus o loop, and then name a file at location that you created, and a mount point, which in this case is home james mount image that I showed you earlier. And this one is, I think I have called it video. Yes, I did. <coughs> Notice I only pressed the tab key to complete that, and have to retype this whole monstrosity. And uh, you could also bury this in, in script files, although it wouldn't really work for for this situation. You're, you know, you have a variable that changes each and every time that you can't predict, and that being the name of the image file. But you could. There's, there are ways or other ways to automate things besides graphical user interface. <coughs> so I have mount using the loopback function, um, IBM video image, press enter. There we go. Okay, so what? Big deal. I did command line. But did it mount? Well, yes, it did. Prove it. Okay. So I'll go over here and I will go to mount image and we're blank. Oh, no, we're not. There it is. There is my file. Copy that. And I was doing video drivers. Was I not? Yes, I was. I, what I did already is I right click, copy, right click, paste, there it is, done, and I just unmount that drive. Oh, it's busy because it is selected. Now it's unselected, and it still is busy, but the window's open, and we're done. Okay, so that is all done. I'm done with this one. We're out of here. So even if I <clears throat> sometimes when you get a disk that you can't copy and paste a file at all, you'll at least with this procedure be able to copy and paste the portion of the file that DD Rescue is able to uh, to rescue. Now, obviously, if a portion of the floppy disk drive that I'm going to end up taking out here in just a second.
this thing right here is damaged and the damage area is where your files are then it <coughs> obviously won't be able to recreate the damage portion but it'll, it'll be create every single bit of that file that was not damaged done okay so now how could these things actually be used well <coughs> There is a simulator called Box, B-O-C-H-S, that you could run both Linux and Windows, and it likes to use image files. I've actually done a presentation on it. Uh, you could, you basically don't have to have a floppy drive bay on your computer if you're running Box and the operating system requires a floppy disk. You can actually mount that um, floppy disk image with Box inside uh, your your system and and use that floppy drive as if it were inserted actually um, this can be important let's say if you want to use box to install Windows 98 in a virtual machine inside your Linux partition you're probably gonna need you know a good maybe 10 gigabytes of space to get a lot of programs on there uh, but to install something like Windows 98 you actually have to be able to boot from a floppy first and then it formats the drive and then installs the program then it's able to actually boot from the BIOS <coughs> you can't just stick a Windows 98 or a Windows ME disk inside the drive and have it boot and have the installation start from there um, that's one reason to have DOS sitting around if you want to use those older systems to run your legacy apps uh, DOS EMU is very good at running legacy apps and here's one situation that I guess I'm going to show I haven't shown presentation before so I'm going into a different subject but I guess that's okay um, <coughs> although two things we have um, in fact maybe I should stop here and then I'll go into this subject uh, for for accounting firms they'll know it's a separate yeah 